Yeah. Hi everybody, we're gonna do another quick video. This is one we've been having some troubles with out there because there's so many different versions of them. We're talking about e-stops today or emergency stop switches for some of your appliances out there. They come in a bunch of different flavors, but we're gonna talk about some of the kind of the things you're gonna be looking for when purchasing one and then what to also, how to turn one and off and how to wire it most importantly. Okay, so let's kind of start out with first off, what to look for. One, we need to find out whether our product is an always open item or always closed. So is it a system that needs a contact, meaning that it's gonna be closed when we activate the switch, and then when we deactivate it, like this particular one, and when we push the button, it deactivates or opens the circuit. So always closed or always open. Now, some of the switches can do both, and we're gonna kinda of go over that in a minute, so make sure you're buying a switch that's appropriate for what you're using. Now, the other thing I, I like is buying a good quality switch. Um, you know, you'll see some of these guys have, you'll see the, the square with the square that's double insulated. Usually I mean it's a little nicer switch. One that is bought at a place that is actually set up for electrical appliances. If I wish you guys could feel these, there's a massive difference between this switch that is a piece of trash and a good quality switch that may cost you a little bit more money. So um, they're gonna op be operated. So if you have one of these at your house and one of the kids accidentally hits it and turns it off, remember these are emergency switches. They're gonna shut down for us. It's gonna shut down your batteries, your generator, your solar, whatever that might be. Now, for this one, we have to twist and it opens back up. Some of them you'll have to remember where the key is. Usually I put the key in the electrical panel so I don't forget it if it is there so I don't have to drill it back out again. Some of them will just be a pull. You'll just pull it straight back. So if it doesn't have the arrows on it, usually it is a pull straight back. So that's kind of the more uh, common one we like because it's just real easy to pop in and out. But sometimes you will have kids that will walk by and hit them, so keep an eye on them. Uh, some of them, some areas will mandate that you have an actual light that kicks on when they happen. But let's get into actually wiring one and why it's such a problem, okay? Now, this particular version has numbers on it and it has an opened side and a closed side. Which normally, what happens with most of your switches out there that are only one, will be a closed when it is the, in the standard position or operating position and open when you press the button in. So when you push the button in, it is now activated, or it's now deactivated, and usually it's gonna open the circuit. Both the buttons we're gonna be looking at today are have the ability to do one or the other. So you gotta watch where you're connecting up. So we're gonna kinda talk about that. Now how do we test for that? We're gonna turn our meters over here to the ohms setting, which is that upside down horseshoe, or continuity setting, and mattering what it is. Uh, I always want to test my leads to make sure they're working properly. So I want to just expose what I barely need. So just what I need to be able to do the job I'm looking at. And then I'm going to hold them together. And I want it to basically zero all the way out. This one's getting very close, if not on top. Um, really, I'm just looking for the sound. I'm just looking to see when it's on or off. So if we were to I know this particular one got installed to where they just crossed the two circuits here. You'll see on this one it has 12 and 24, and on the other side it actually says 23 and 11. So the 12 and 20 and 12 and 11 section go together. The 24 and 23 section go together. Some of them are not like that. Some of them are just straight up. You have a red and a green side on this side. One side will work when it's engaged. One side will not. So. I'm going to use it on this one, but usually what you'll be able to see is most of them will have that 11-12. That the 11-12 goes together. So if I try to activate these across, no matter what I do, I'm not going to get that tone noise. Even if I open it up, I'm not going to get the tone noise. Okay, I'm not going to get that. Because it's not connected anywhere in the switch. There's no way to go across. We have to go from both sides, which kind of makes it difficult in this particular picture. But I'm going to have to hold, see if I can hold one with one hand and hold one with the other hand and see how it's, um, this particular one is in the open position and the other side will be closed. If I push down on the switch, it opens the circuit 
and turns off the item in this particular case. What we usually use is a constantly closed, open when the switch is engaged type situation. But on this side, now we do have, you know, if it worked right, which this one does not normally work right. When it is engaged, it will actually close. So what we're gonna see by that is kind of this guy here. We have this one, we're gonna test. So we have our two leads across. Remember the switches are gonna be across. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe I can get Dan here to just kind of look a little over top of me if he can't see that. So on this side, that is a constantly open circuit. When I engage it, it actually oh, it clo it closes. So this is the side we use for most of our stuff. We want it to where when the button is engaged or open or pulled all the way back, that it is closed. When the button's engaged, it goes ahead and breaks the circuit and turns off the item, whether that's a battery or a generator. Now on the direct opposite side, which again, I'm going to try to get in here. We have a, if we can get it to actually go off here. So this one is a constantly open circuit. And when the switch is engaged, when I press down on the, on the switch, then it actually engages the circuit. So when it's in the normal up position, it's open, breaking the circuit. This is what the old Tesla had to be. And then when you pressed on the button, it breaks, it breaks the, or opens the circuit, if I can get this guy. Sorry guys, we'll try to get one of my fingers in there. And then it engages the circuit and shuts it down, or shorts the circuit. So like I said, most of the time you're gonna want this version here, which is gonna be constantly closed. So it's gonna be closed for everyday use. And then if somebody presses the button, it opens. This is really important that you're toning these guys out, guys, so you can make sure they're working properly so that when you're using them and you're going to go ahead and press on the button, that it's actually doing what it's doing. Now, this particular one, you see here, as I press on it, it this round part in the middle opens up, pressing on the two buttons and pushing them down. Okay? This particular one, you got to watch out for these guys. You'll see these all over the internet. They're just absolute trash. And then you can see the switch is actually broken and spinning inside. That's why we had to replace this one. So put twist it up, we hit it, and it will do one or the other. So for most of the stuff we do, guys, the ones that are just the constantly closed, when you push the button, they open or deactivate the circuit. That's what we'll use most of the time. But make sure you guys are kind of checking that when you wire it, because they're all different. I've got five different versions here at the shop and each one of them works a little differently. So make sure you're checking They're just because you go, oh, well, it's 24 and 23. I know what I'm doing. Not always is that the case, guys. Always check, use your meters, make sure you're sitting on the right side and then check, make sure you're ohming them out for one so they work properly and resetting the system using good test leads. This is how I found a bad set of test leads here just recently. Oming them out and realizing they weren't, weren't zeroing out the counter on there, the, the screen. Excuse me guys. Uh, so as always guys, like, share. I mean, that's really how we, we get this out to everybody. This is an important safety feature. Uh, we've had these installed proper, improperly on other companies' jobs that we've had to go take a look at because people didn't understand this and their batteries drain dead. Cost $20,000 for a simple wiring mistake. So just keep that in mind. This is not something we wanna do. Or the battery may not back up when the customer wants it because it was in the off position because you wired it and the switch has popped out and the customer says the switch has popped out, but it's not working because you didn't wire it properly. This could be a $20,000 mistake, maybe even more. Maybe they got six or seven batteries. 20 grand a pop, it will really go through quick. All right, guys, as always, have a great day, and we will talk to you next time.